can follow along live if you want to. Uh, just go to pro.benzinga.com. There's a, a free trial with no credit card required. Uh, so, so you could feel free to click around just like I'm going to show you here within the next hour or so. And so I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen here. And I, let's see, can everybody see me? I'm just checking the chat. Let me know if you can see me right now because I think the, I think Fausto, okay, awesome. Fausto was speaking and now I'm just gonna go ahead and share my screen. <clears throat> so you should be able to see my screen now <clears throat> at pro.benzinga.com. And I'm just gonna hop over to this other workspace here. And this is what it looks like when you first open it up, right? But the real question is, why would you use this when you've got a whole bunch of other great tools out there? Uh, you know, you got, got CTU and Fausto showing you those iceberg trays, the level two stuff, level three. Um, and, you know, what we're most known for is the news that's going to move the price of a stock. So I'm sure, you know, you, you have all seen a uh, stock go up like 20% or something. And then you look on your brokerage and you say, whoa, where in the world did that come from? Well, this is how you can get that news as quickly as possible to go upstream of that volatility. And then there's a bunch of other bells and whistles on here as well. So I'm going to get to that news feed and make sure you have something to take notes with, because I'm going to give you my short list of my favorite news categories that I use to filter the news feed. So you don't have to read through thousands of different uh, news items, but maybe, maybe 100, 200 for the day, depending on your filters. However, first things first, I want to show you how I start my trading day. And, you know, I am not a genius by any means. I, I just want to follow the volatility. And there's a bunch of other, you know, more advanced uh, techniques out there and that type of thing. But whether you're new or you're experienced, I think you can agree that when things start taking off, it hits a whole bunch of different day trading scanners and that type of thing. And we've all seen this year how important the retail trader is to the entire market. And so this tool right here, Movers Tool, it's a very simple gap scanner showing you what's moving within a certain time frame, either since the previous trading day or, you know, during the trading day. And I just love using this, especially in the pre-market to find what's gapped since the previous trading day. And so in this case here, I'll just show you, we have applied filters and I'm setting this to gainers and then it's set to the pre-market. And now for the period, I could set this to five minutes, 15 minutes if I want to see what's taken off right now. Or, you know, maybe you're gone for lunch for an hour and you just want to see what's moved in the past hour. But for today's purposes, I'll set it for the entire session. Then if you want to, you could filter by sector, market cap, price per share. And if you don't see the exact thresholds that you want here, you could always click on custom and you could say, all right, maybe I don't want want penny stocks, but I'll go down to two bucks. And you could do it that way, whatever, whatever works best for you. And if I zoom in here, you should be able to see that this is telling me it's measuring from yesterday at 4 p.m. at the close to today at 9.29 a.m. But if I'm on there at, at 6.30 or 7 or 7.30 a.m., it would just measure the percent change for that period of time. And so I'm collapsing these applied filters here. And this is why I love it is because it's so simple. All I have to do is start clicking through here. We've got uh, GTEC and notice how it brought up that chart on the other side of my screen. And so, um, you know, it, you can see that big gap there. And then of course it s sort of sold off, but this is where it's really handy to have all that information in one place. You have this, why is it moving headline here? So immediately you can see that the company announced a deal with South China heavy machinery manufacturer uh, for U.S. production of electric industrial vehicles. And then, you know, I have this on the chart tab here, but if I click over to the news tab on the details tool, I can scroll down and I can see, okay, interesting. This was a press release that came out at uh, 7 a.m. And then this is also tagged, pay attention here, 
with contracts. That is one of my favorite tags to follow other than FDA and biotech uh, because this is a very common cause of those moves. Now, I didn't actually read through all of this because I, I just looked at the, uh, the summary headline here from our news desk and notice how this says BZ Wire. So you've got the press releases that are pumped directly into our system. And then you have BZ Wire, which are manually typed headlines, or in this case, they also uh, you know, redistributed or copied and pasted the, uh, the press release there. But they, they uh, summarize the most important information and they can also add those, those tags for things sometimes similar to the contracts down here in the press release. So, you know, this, to be honest, when it's no terms disclosed like this, it kind of feels like a pump and dump situation to me. But, uh, you know, I, I'm not an expert on this stock. We can see it was halted, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but, you know, if, if you wanted to watch it uh, throughout the day, then you could make some drawings here. If you're into the charting, maybe draw out a horizontal line at that pre-market high and knows uh and maybe want to map out a low or something like that you know this kind of seems significant and it, it just kind of it pushed up a little bit and then it didn't break past that pre-market high and kind of as i would say gap and crapped um so i would just move on from there and then you just start clicking through some of these other items all right that looks kind of similar uh but down here with capa this one was more of, of an interesting situation here. So if I would draw this out, you know, and I'm just looking for what, what really took off right at the, at the open there, and then I could add in an indicator here, like maybe a moving average line. And you might notice this chart from trading view here, uh, moving average exponential. And that's kind of hard to read. So I can just go up here to where it says nine EMA and click on that gear symbol and change that to maybe a yellow, thicken it up a little bit. So as you can see, there's a lot of flexibility there, but if you were using the, that um, pre-market high as your entry point and you were using the nine EMA as a stop, uh, then you had, you had quite a bit of room to run there. Um, and then, you know, who knows if you were waiting for the stop, it, it would have come down a lot, but that's just, I, you know, this is not rocket science. This is very, very basic technical analysis, just mapping out those support and resistance levels and using a little moving average line. And I do see someone raise their hand here. I'm opening up the participants. Um, whoever, whoever raised their hand, let's see, Robert, if you throw your uh, question into the Q&A, I would love to answer your question. Um, I don't know if we have audio access or not on here, but if you throw that into the Q&A for your Zoom, I will be sure to answer that. Or, or in the chat, if you throw that to the panelists in the chat. So anyways, I'm just clicking through all of these and uh, it's, it's pretty basic, right? But what I want to emphasize here is the importance of following those stocks that are volatile. Maybe you don't trade penny stocks and that's totally fine. Um, but you could just filter it for uh, larger price per share stocks. And either way, these are the companies that are gonna be hitting those day trading scanners that especially right now, hundreds of thousands of people are watching. In a perfect world, you would catch the news ahead of time, but you're not always going to. So this is great for those, those technical plays uh, where you can just check the chart, check the news. Do you like the, the, the momentum from that news catalyst or do you like the chart? And then if you wanted to, you can look at peer companies for possible sympathy plays, uh, financials, et cetera. And you could just click on watch here in the upper right corner to add it to your, one of your watch lists. Or you could click on the note. to. It's almost like a trading journal where you say, you know, uh, here was the news catalyst, such and such price target, et cetera. Um, and that's pretty much it. So regardless of, of your holding period, it, your, your price per share that you're looking at, it's just about finding that volatility in the market, bringing all that information together in one place 
And then again, I will emphasize as you're clicking through these, this is a great way to learn how to trade off the news. Pay attention to what the category tags are on some of these items that are causing these big moves. So opinion, small cap, uh, that's kind of generic there, but you saw contracts earlier and I'll share with you in just a couple minutes here, some of my personal favorites for those news categories. All right, I'm just checking the chat here to see if that question came in. Oh, thanks for the question, Carrie. Uh, seeing the pre-market activity, do you actually trade in pre-market? Great question, Carrie. Um, so personally, I don't trade a lot in the pre-market. Uh, there's, there's pluses and minuses, right? Some people love it because of the volatility. Uh, that volatility can be good or bad depending on, on your execution, right? So the downside is that there can be less volume in the pre-market and it can be harder to, to execute uh, when you want to at the price point you want to. I see Fausto saying CTU does. And so, you know, if you, if you got Fausto leading the way and, and Rich leading the way there, and uh, there's lots of opportunity in the pre-market, a ton of people do. I follow some other people that do. Um, just personally, I, I, to be honest, I'm, I'm usually busy with work around that time. Um, but yeah, so it has positives and negatives. It depends on how comfortable you are with that volatility and uh, lower vol lower trading volume. Um, let's see. All right. <laughs> Everybody's saying hi to Fausto. Awesome to be here together. All right. So let's take a look at the news feed. So uh, if you don't have your pen and paper out already, this is really a good place to do that. Um, because I'm hopping over here to our newsfeed and it's all in different colors. Looks like a rainbow right now, but you'll notice here on the left side of my screen, that's where the navigation bar is. And so newsfeed is a top icon on the left-hand navigation bar. And all I have to do to open another newsfeed is to click on that icon. Or I also could have clicked on in workspace. New window would have given me a pop out to drag to another uh, screen or monitor. But this is the difference here. You know, this, um, this highlighting is actually retained across both news feeds, but the one on the left is filtered and the one on the right is not filtered. So you can see there's a ton of information on here and that's all good and fine and dandy. The question is how do I filter through all this information to find a new actionable trade item? Um, assuming, you know, I'm not, if I'm looking for something other than those iceberg trades that I'm sure a lot of you are already familiar with. So the way that I do it here is I like to, number one, pay attention to the new source. So on the right side of your screen, you'll see it says BZ wire. And that's important to know because these are manually typed headlines by a professional news desk. So like right here where it says Volkswagen says could list around 25% of Porsche in IPO. This is a quote from Dow Jones and it's tagged with IPOs, news and rumors. So that's kind of interesting. The only downside of this is that it takes anywhere from a number of seconds to a number, number of minutes for our team to get these headlines into the system. So that's where some people who want that lightning fast news, they would wanna add press releases. And you do that by clicking on the sources button here in the upper left corner. And you can see Benzinga wire is right there. It's checked already. And we have a number of different sources here. The automated sources that go directly into our system are Benzinga signals, which are algorithm based signals for price spikes, block trades, uh, unusual options, things like that. And then press releases, which I'll check right here. And finally, SEC filings. Those can be great for doing deeper research on financials, offerings, insider trades, and things like that. But if a company is distributing information to the public and they're choosing to do that through a press release, this is the fastest way to get that information. And so when I click done here in the bottom right corner, you'll see all that brown, orangish brown that showed up on my screen. That's additional content that was not on there before. And so 
normally there would be a lot more actually there would be probably one or two thousand of these per day in our system but this is filtered down if i click on one of these and scroll down to the bottom you'll see this is filtered with contracts and i can tell you right now that contracts is on my short list of category filters that i have selected for this news feed so that's really the next step there once i add in those press releases gotta zoom out here there we go then i just go to categories here and we see this list of different types of news items and this is really a part of the value add of benzinga pro because as i'm sure you're aware you can get even benzinga's news on your brokerage on you know you have these other news sites but i haven't seen this style of filtering with that ease of access and highlighting uh in in any other places to be honest so uh let's just start here right at the top second from the top is analyst ratings and i just love analyst actions especially those initiations and upgrades usually i'm looking at smaller price per share stocks because that can really make the stock take off sometimes. I'll show you the analyst ratings calendar here in a little bit. But again, that's initiation. So if you're brand new, that's the first time that a sell side analyst is giving a rating to that company. And if it's a positive rating with a strong price target, it can really take off. Or an upgrade where they're saying, hey, before this was a hold, now it's a buy, uh, you know, and, and that can be good for the stock as well. So I like to follow those. Then underneath analyst ratings here, we have economics. And notice how this is highlighted in yellow. You can highlight any one of these categories by clicking and dragging this rainbow colored bar on the right side of the screen. So as I'm clicking and dragging that, it's changing the color in my filters, but also changing the color of those types of items within my newsfeed. All right, we've got economics. Just want to follow those economic numbers that could move the whole market. And then underneath economics, we have general. Now, I actually did not check the box here for general. I just clicked on the word. But I do check the boxes for biotech and healthcare. I love the biotech sector. Lots of volatility to trade off of. I think the technology is very interesting. So I love to research these companies as well. And then, of course, with the coronavirus pandemic it's especially applicable but i highlight both of these in blue because they're related to each other again that's biotech and healthcare underneath general then underneath general we have the hot category now the hot category is the most important items that can move the entire market major economic numbers geopolitical situations coronavirus updates uh, big earnings or ipos that everybody's watching things like that. And then underneath hot is M&A for mergers and acquisitions. Uh, definite cause, we had a bunch of mergers and acquisitions this morning, actually, which we'll see in a minute. And then finally, the news category. Now, I don't want all of these, even though a lot of these are very good. Uh, just personally, I'm looking at asset sales, and that's highlighted in green for cash, because they're selling an asset like a factory or a subsidiary firm, and they're going to get cash for that asset, usually good for the price of the stock. And then contracts, they're inking a deal for future goods or services rendered, and they're going to receive cash eventually for those goods and services. And then down here in the middle, we have FDA for the Food and Drug Administration. Again, this is highlighted in blue, uh, similar to those biotech or healthcare items. And then toward the bottom, we have rumors. Now, quick note on rumors. This really applies to all types of trading off the news, especially with rumors, though. You have to know the type of news item that you're talking about and the way that that specific company has historically reacted to that type of news item. Because these rumors can range anywhere from a pump and dump style press release that's being circulated in chat rooms because of some chatter and it's causing some penny stock to go up 20%. We're going to tell you about that because if you trade penny stocks, you want to know about it, but don't treat that as a buy signal as a, you know, for, for anyone who's not familiar with that, that is not a buy recommendation from Benzinga. It's us telling you, Hey, this is why that's happening in the market. And it could cause continued volatility going up or down. 
on the other end of the spectrum, you might have more concrete news catalyst, maybe from a reputable news source like Bloomberg or Reuters saying, we're hearing Cantor Fitzgerald is giving a $70 price target increase to Facebook or Apple. Well, that could have immediate impact on the price of that stock just based off of the rumor, but it could also cause sustained momentum if it comes to fruition. Maybe the rumor is true. Uh, lots of times it is with those types of rumors. So uh, there's a whole spectrum there. Rumors are great. One of my favorite news catalysts, just know what you're dealing with there. Uh, there's a lot more on here that I'm not including on the short list. You know, so if you want earnings, guidance, IPOs, splits, uh, the legal category has a lot of patents uh, that can be interesting, but I'm just clicking done here in the bottom right corner. And again, this is the difference here. All I have to do is start hovering over some of these. <laughs> That's interesting. AMC up six and a half percent today uh, with that GameStop hearing going on. Um, you know, these aren't all going to be home runs, but it will definitely show you where there's volatility in the market. And that, that offers a lot of different trading opportunities. I'm checking the chat here because I see there's like 10 chats I didn't uh, look at yet. Let's see here. All right, where can you see the float? Um, yeah, so you can see the float in the details tool. So um, if I click on AMC and then I just scroll down here to the key data points, then you should be able to see the float right here under key data points. Um, now we are a quick caveat there. We are actually looking at getting a new data provider for float because, um, uh, you know, they, they update it every so often. Um, uh, but our current data provider was being a little slow with those updates. Uh, but that is where you would find it on our platform. All right. And then, all right. Thanks. Thanks for helping Michael. I uh, see you answering some questions there and then through trade station. Yeah. Okay. So a bunch of questions of how CD CTU is trading and then SPACs. So a question does, does Benzinga pro mention SPACs? And the answer is yes. We don't have a category yet for SPACs, but I could open up a new news feed here and I could search for uh, SPAC. And so as you can see here, there's a bunch of information even today off of a SPAC acquisition that, you know, look at all of this, Osprey Technology up 25%, um, you know, this other company up over 100%, Jaguar Health. So uh, that's one way you can just use the keyword searches uh, on the news feed. And then uh, let's see here, how much memory does Benzinga require to use on my computer? And could it slow down or possibly crash my already slow computer? Yeah, DD, um, it is, I mean, it, it's on Google Chrome and it can be memory intensive at times. Uh, we've worked a lot to optimize it to decrease that load on your computer. Um, so I don't know your specific type or, or, or the other programs that you're running on it that you, unfortunately, you just have to run a speed test and see how that's affecting um, your, uh, your computer. And Wayne, I totally understand, you know, this looks overwhelming. How do you filter it down to just uh, what, what you set filters for? So that's why I kind of was trying to give you a starting point here. I'm talking a little fast when I get excited. Uh, I should probably slow down a little bit. Um, but these categories right here, that I just shared with you, this is what I would start with if I was a beginner in terms of, of news catalysts to look at, and you could always add to it. Um, so just to recap there, that was analyst ratings, economics, under generally of biotech and healthcare, hot, m and and then under news, <clears throat> we have asset sales, contracts, FDA, and rumors. And so <clears throat> that's just something to get you started there. What I highly recommend is if you're new, uh, start with the movers tool. 
uh, you know, it's a great simple way just to click through those symbols. That's kind of why I started the presentation that way. And you can just go, sorry, <clears throat> excuse me. You can just go bit by bit through each of those companies that are moving a lot and see, all right, what type of news caused this volatility? And you can learn it just like I did or even better than I did if you put your work into it. So um, for all of you beginners out there or people that aren't used to all these bells and whistles, um, don't feel like you have to use everything. In fact, you probably shouldn't use everything. You're just looking for one or two or three data points that can give you an edge in the market. And so there's a bunch of scanners out there that are very powerful, um, but this is just a simple scanner to show you where that volatility is at. If the charting helps you just to keep it all in one place, then great. <clears throat> and then the, the news feed is really the heart and soul of Benzinga Pro. Uh, that really sets us apart. And it's how we got started as a company. So excuse me. Um, and yes, that's, that's true. Thank you, CTU admin, that this is all web-based, so you don't have to download anything to your computer. Um, let's see here. And then, uh, Carrie, is this the only thing that you have up during your day? Benzinga Pro looks like that you do not need anything else right so you would we don't have execution in here so if you're using trade station you would need trade station open or whatever other broker you're using we are working on a plaid integration that will allow for trading execution but these buy and sell buttons are just for internal testing at this point um so so you would need your broker open and then let's see here michael yeah, the normal monthly cost is $99 a month or $177 a month. I'll throw that uh, link. You should just go to pro.benzinga.com slash pricing. And for today only, just for this group, we have a special deal for all of you. Uh, so you can use the code CTU2021. I'm throwing that in the chat here. CTU2021 for 35% off uh, annuals. And that, you know, that'll save you like 500 bucks over the course of the year. The total with, normally that's 1404 per year. Um, and, uh, you know, since I already said it, I'll just change the code. It was gonna be 982 for the year, uh, but I'll make, I'll, I'll bring that down to 912 bucks for the year. So um, anyways, we can talk more about pricing and stuff. I'll, I'm sure you guys will have my contact info. So contact my team or whatever, but really it's just a matter of seeing whether or not this will be helpful for your trading style. And that's what it's all about. Are you going to make more money than what you spend on it? Um, that's the goal of any of these types of tools. All right, looking at, we, we're about halfway through the hour here. And feel free to keep, keep the questions coming. It's been great so far. But this is pretty much my favorite way to filter the news feed. You'll notice I already used that search bar. There's some other great ways to filter it, though. So, I mean, get rid of that filtered news feed. And I'm sure many of you have watch lists. Maybe you just have some favorite stocks that you trade on a regular basis. And so you could very quickly filter by a watch list. Just click on watch lists here within the news feed. And you can see these are watch lists I've already built within my watch list tool. So this is not where you build it. I just click on this watch list. And as soon as I check that box, I'm only going to receive news on those companies. So it's a great way to filter through all the noise and just stay focused on, on what you wanna stay focused on. And then if you wanna build a watch list, you have the watch list tool, the fourth item down here on the left hand side. Just click on that. And you can see I have a watch list here. To build your first watch list, you would click on this plus button here to create a new watch list. And then I'll just say uh, CTU Rocks. That's the name of my watch list. Create watch list. So I have a new watch list here. And I can just start typing companies in here. Maybe some Tesla. Ford, going with some 
some EV plays here. Anyways, whatever you want there, or you could copy and paste from another source. So you could copy and paste up to 500 tickers into one watch list. That way you don't have to type them all in manually. And then you know, to set alerts for this watch list, you would click on the bell symbol to the right of the search bar. So you click on that and you could set a sound alert. So you get a sound every time a new headline comes out on that article. Or we have these toggle switches down here for a real time headline, uh, email alerts, or an email summary before and after each trading day on those stocks. Then you could rename the watch list, export it to a CSV, create a new watch list, or I'll just go ahead and delete this watch list right now. And of course, you could always switch between your various watch lists. So once you have that set, that, that alarm or that email set, you don't even have to keep this open to use it for filtering. Just close this. And that now if you have this filtered by watch list, you hear that bell or alarm or whatever you have set going off. And then you know exactly why that's going off if you look at this filtered newsfeed. And then you could filter by sector as well if you just trade. Like I, I told you, I like healthcare stocks. So I could just check that and then just look at healthcare. Um, and then one last thing here, I wanna show you guys how to find some insider trades on Benzinga Pro. And there's a few different ways to do this. I'm just pausing here to look at the chat because I see a lot of chat messages coming in. Um, oh, thanks, Carrie. <laughs> That's the goal. Definitely, the goal is definitely to, to save you some time there. Um, yeah, there's a free 14-day trial with no credit card required. And uh, so that you would have two weeks there. Awesome. Okay, let's get to trades. This is kind of interesting. It's, uh, it's not the same as looking at those iceberg trades that I know um, Fausto and, and CTU watch, but it's, it's still interesting. So one way that you can go about looking at this is you could go to sources and check on SEC for SEC filings. I'm actually going to reset my filters here, get rid of Benzinga wire and just do SEC and then click done. So now I have all my SEC filings right in here. Um, you could get this from the Edgar database, but it's pretty quick and simple to filter through this. And to find those insider trades, you wanna search for form four with no space between form and four. And so this is where you can see um, some of these are smaller trades, some are larger, but this is a feder federally mandated form that they have to fill out whenever a C-suite executive or someone on the board of directors is buying or selling shares of the stock. Now there are a lot of these to go through. So you could filter this by, by a, uh, a watch list or check this out. I'm opening up a second news feed here and we have an insider trades category. So I'm, I went to categories, and I'm going down to news and there's an insider trades category here where our news desk goes through a whole bunch of these and they find the really big ones, you know, here, 635,000 shares at an average price of $21 and 49 cents a share. That's a decent amount of money there. And they gave you a nice little sentiment indicator, a little up arrow saying, Hey, you might want to pay attention to this, uh, based off of our experience. So you've got the raw data on the left-hand side, kind of uh, served up to you on a silver platter on the right hand side. And then there's one more way that you can find insider trades here. And to do that, I'm just gonna open up a new workspace and I'm gonna open up the calendar tool. So that's the third item down on your left hand toolbar. And so I don't know how many of you follow options or unusual options, um, but this can be really interesting uh, it opened up automatically to my earnings calendar because there's actually 13 different calendars within this tool. But I'm gonna click down on the unusual options activity calendar. And so there's a number of ways that our algorithm picks up these trades. It could be the number of contracts in that trade. It could be the total trade price, maybe volume over open interest. There's a few different parameters it can use. But the first thing I wanna point out here 
is this total trade price column. And you can sort by any of these columns. Uh, that's part of why I like this table format. But, you know, these say $25,000. I don't really care as much about the $25,000 trades. It's not going to move the market. However, if I, let's see, uh, it changed my sorting on me here. Do, do, do. Just scrolling back up. I don't know. Something weird happened there. Um, but anyways, I can just go to filters here on the right-hand side. And I can go down to total trade price. And I can say only show me trades greater than 250 grand. So now it has to be larger than $250,000 in order to show up on my calendar. And then... Let's say if I'm looking for insider trades, I can go to security type and it's probably not on an ETF. So I can get rid of the ETFs. And then, uh, so, so I'm looking at greater than a quarter million dollars for only stocks. And then the next step I would go to is probably volume over open interest. Now, let's see if volume over open interest is up here. Looks like I need to talk to our dev team about that blue bar. But uh, anyways, you can see on the right-hand side here, that's a volume over open interest. And that's actually calculating the size of that order. Um, so that's this one right here, the number of contracts in that order compared to the open interest on that type of contract. So it's basically showing you a spike in volume for that particular contract type and it can indicate a more significant trade. So if, I'm, if I say a ratio of one, that means that one order was at least as many contracts as all of the other open contracts of that type. And then the last thing I'm gonna pay attention to here is DTE, days to expiration. And that's really significant for insider trades because think about it, if you're going into earnings or you're going into some conference announcement and you know what's gonna happen, why would you pay all the premium for a, a contract that's two years out when you can leverage your money more and make more money in a shorter period of time? So if I go to filters here and go up to DTE, I'm going to say less than 60 days. And so out of all of those uh, items, you know, it was, you know, probably hundreds or thousands of trades i'm down to maybe at what a couple dozen here and then i sort by the symbol so i can see some patterns here uh looks like baidu futu neo um and i can just click on any one of these to kind of see what's going on now this could be i i don't actually have a an earnings catalyst that i'm paying attention to i was just using these filters and ex, as an example but this could also indicate some sentiment around some other type of catalyst. Maybe they're really bullish or really bearish. Uh, so this is another data point that you can add to your tool belt. And uh, a lot of people swear by it. A quick note here, that option data, along with, if I open up the signals tool here, the option activity on our signals tool, these, this is the same data here, just displayed in two different ways. This is the only add-on package to the essential plan. So it's an extra $27.97 per month. A lot of people love it um, and, and make a lot of money off of it. But um, if you don't get that, you'll still have access to all of the other parts of these tools. So you'd still have access to the analyst ratings calendar and block trades and all that good stuff um, if, if you don't get the option activity. But... Um, all right, I'm just checking the chat here. And, and for those of you who don't trade options, um, don't get overwhelmed by this. Remember what I said, don't feel like you have to use every single tool in here. You probably shouldn't. But even, even for people who don't trade options, this can be helpful to indicate, uh, you know, support or resistance levels or things like that. All right, nothing else in the chat for right now. So... I think what I want to do is just stick with the calendar tool here and show you 
the analyst ratings calendar, I'm like second guessing myself here because I do three of these demos a day, but the analyst ratings calendar is one of my all time favorites. You know, when I was a beginner, uh, I just wanted something that would give me an indication of if the stock would go up or down. Or some of you might be saying, hey, just just give me a good stock pick. Uh, you know, I, I'm trying to learn how to trade, but along the way, I wouldn't mind some some uh, decent buy and hold situations as well. Well, guess what? Here you have a bunch of people whose job it is to to give ratings on companies, Series 7 licensed people, and they give you the price target right here. So what I love to do, uh, whether it's a, for a buy and hold or especially for short term, I just filter over here on the right hand side by action on security. So I just deselect all of those except for initiates coverage on. So I've got a few of those for today. And then you can further filter that down by rating. So I'll get rid of the hold and the neutral. I just want the really positive stuff. And I can just start scrolling through here. Um, all right, here's one that's up 4.6%. Up 1.24%. This one came down a lot again, I think. Is that the one that was up a lot earlier? Um, I don't even remember. But anyways, sometimes, you know, uh, if basically if it's a smaller price per share stock and they're looking for legitimacy and then some big sell side firm comes in, gives it a strong rating, strong price target. They're saying things are looking great for this company. Boom, it could go up 20%. So, um, and it doesn't have to, right? I mean, 4% is good. Uh, just one thing that I notice is a lot of times, look, this is continued volatility. So you could trade this on the upside or the downside, and it's not all eaten up by, by algorithms either. So I, and then I could switch over to upgrades instead of initiations. And then I know Titan Pharmaceuticals was a big one today. And so I could switch over to the chart here and see, all right, what was going on with a five minute chart? Let's even try the, the one minute chart. And I could scroll back and see, okay, so if you trade in the pre-market like CTU does, you've got a nice, what, one, two, three, four, four, maybe five minutes there before it kind of consolidates a bit. And then it, it looks like it sold off, spiked up, sold off again, but look at how the volume comes in here for that first push up, sells off, and then boom, volume comes in again, all the way up to 460 there. Um, so anyways, this is just another way that you can catch some of those plays. Uh, other than analyst ratings and unusual options, uh, you know, you've got conference calls, dividends, earnings, economics. This is kind of handy. I like the importance column here. If you're not already familiar with which numbers are the most important, that can come in handy. Um, IPOs. Everybody's asking me for IPOs. Where can I find those? You can find them in here or in the newsfeed category. And then splits as well. Reverse splits, normal splits, you name it. So uh, let me know if you have questions on the calendar tool. Just bring all that data to you in a table format with some really convenient filters uh, that you can use on it. All right, in the time that we have left here, um, I would just want to hop over to the signals tool again, because very briefly, I showed you the option activity, right? It's the same activity, just in a one line format. So it's streaming in real time. And, uh, and there's a bunch of great stuff on our help site. If you're not familiar, with how to read these. You could just go over to this question mark in the upper right corner. That'll take you to our help site. You can just type in unusual options or just options. And you can see how do I understand the option activity signal? So it tells you what's bullish, what's bearish, and then a nice little breakdown of each part of that signal. And by the way, on our help site, we've got a ton of tutorial videos, past webinars. In fact, I think uh, from last Friday, we've got a full hour on how one of our users takes advantage of those unusual options. Um, let's see, I'm just opening up the chat here again. 
Uh, we don't have any futures data, Peter. Um, it's just U.S. equities at this point. And then hopefully we'll be branching out to uh, TSX soon. But good question. No, no futures data at this point other than, let's see, uh, Zoom is blocking my view of the different tabs I have open here. Um, you, if you were on the news feed, there is a category for markets. I go to markets here. And so you'll see a little bit of, of material from futures here, Forex, cannabis, commodities, et cetera. So you could check out some of these other uh, markets related content items as well. Okay, so back to the signals tool here. Uh, other than option activity, we have block trades. Block trades are pretty straightforward. It's more than 200,000 shares traded at one time. And that could be buying or selling. Now, I usually want to get rid of some of these OTC stocks that are less than a penny in here. So that's where I just go up to the filters and then click add a filter. And then I could go to price and say, I don't know, I don't, I don't mind penny stocks. Just give me something greater than, I don't know, 50 cents. So there, that narrows it down a lot. And, uh, and now you can see that sometimes it'll tell you above ask or below bid. So you know if it's uh, bearish or bullish. Uh, and then other times you would just have to check the chart. Um, and then Carrie, yeah, if you're trying to uh, start the trial, um, here, let me just give you my phone number. It's 313-915-5155 or onboarding at benzinga.com. Uh, and then, yeah, I think uh, they just posted the link in there as well. If you just go to pro.benzinga.com, there's a little button that says start my free trial or, or register. So, um, so that should work or let me know if you need any help. Um, all right, so you, we got the block trades in there and then halts and resumes can come in handy. We got some highs and lows. So basically I break this into three different types of signals. You got the momentum based signals like highs, lows, and then price spikes, where it's more is spiking more than 1% in a five minute period. You have the institutional activity with the options activity and the block trades. And then the halts and resumes are kind of their own. Uh, I mean, some people would consider that momentum. Um, but yeah, the halts and resumes are in there as well. Now, once you have all this set, you would just turn on those notifications with a desktop notification, a sound alert, or a synthesized voice alert. And so the signals tool, again, this is really just for keeping a pulse on the market or on a specific set of companies. Uh, some people are really good at filtering through a lot of information. So they can go through all of those price spikes or all of even the session high, session lows, and they can pick out that information, or you can add in more, more filters uh, to maybe narrow it down for you. And then I can't leave without talking about the squawk. So our squawk uh, is giving you the most important news items of the day through an audio feed. So if I click on play here and it says connected waiting for audio, it's just waiting for Charlie, who does our squawk, to turn on that broadcaster. In fact, he's uh, <laughs> he was talking into my headset here as I'm trying to talk to you. Um, but they'll give you the most important news items throughout the day. And it's like a walkie-talkie alert where you'll hear the ticker, the news item, the ticker again. And it's a great way to catch those news items, even if you're not looking at a screen. And then the chat. Um, CTU, uh, you know, I, I, I know they have a great chat community. Uh, there's a bunch of other chat communities out there, but we have a pretty good chat community with a lot of experienced traders in here and Benzinga Pro staff. So the, we got the Benzinga Pro Lounge, Benzinga TV that goes with our free YouTube channels, um, and then the boot camp for some of our educational boot camps, talking in there, uh, day trading for more short-term trades, options. So you can see there's there's a lot of different strategies in here and we try to be very helpful to each other. A lot of people share their, their watch list, their support and resistance levels 
et cetera. And uh, how are we doing here, uh, Fausto? I, I, I want to make sure we have enough uh, transition time here, um, but I, I can go into the screener tool if I have enough time. Yeah, I mean, you got about another uh, two minutes. I uh, want to give everyone an opportunity the last five minutes to go out there and um, if they want to check out the demo, the promotion code that we posted up there, and then I'm going to pick up from there. So you got about two minutes. Okay, awesome. Um, so, so, you know, we've got a screener. It's in beta. Um, so, I mean, it's pretty simple here that you can just sort for more, uh, more variables. Like I like relative volume. So I click on technical and then go down to uh, vol relative here. And I might say over 1.5. So it has to be at 50% higher volume than what the average was over the past 90 trading sessions. And I could go to basic filters and I could say it has to be up at least 1% today. And then I could go to volume. I could say it has to be trading over a million shares today. So, you know, it looks like Twilio's up there, Kraft Heinz. Um, so it's in a similar way that you can build a watch list to the, uh, the movers tool. Just you have more variables to work with here. This data is 15 minutes delayed at this point. We're working on building more real-time scanners and screeners and all that good stuff. But if you want real-time movers, use the movers tool, or this can be handy just to build a watch list uh, throughout the day. So just to recap, you know, what are three main ways that you could make money with Benzinga Pro? Number one is the news. You know, we have one of the fastest news feeds. I've showed you a bunch of filters and there's a lot more you can do with it. Just let me know if you have more questions on how to find that news that moves the market. Number two, the movers tool. Uh, there's a bunch of fancy scanners out there, but for me, simplicity is beauty and it will very quickly show you where that volatility is and you can use it in conjunction with the details tool um, and, 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 and do all of your technical analysis in one spot. And then number three, would be the options uh, or, or the calendar tool, you know, to organize all that data in a nice table format, zone in on what's important to you, whether that's analyst upgrades or unusual options of a certain total trade price. And you can see there's a lot of other bells and whistles in there, but I'm just here to serve you. Let me know if there's anything else I can do or, or my team is available throughout the week. And I just wanna thank Fausto and the CTU team for having me on here. Um, and yeah, I, I hopefully we'll talk again soon.